Uh, numerous researchers have tried to determine the role of vitamin D in the immune response to the virus. Systematic reviews and meta-analysis in this case. Now, the, did, the, the day they actually did this data, they collected this data, was the 15th of May 2023. So, obviously, it takes a while to put together a, a complicated paper like this, but that was like the cut-off point for the data. So, it's, 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 fa it's fairly up-to-date data. Um, preventative vitamin D supplementation, they found 16 good publications on that, 1.26 million people. I mean, the, this is just a huge amount of data that's gone into this. One, one, what did I say? 1.26 million people. A huge number of participants. A protective role in the incidence of COVID-19, as we've said. Um, mortality, the paper really can't give firm data on that. We need more studies on that. But admission to intensive care units, for sure. They calculated the odds ratio. The assessment of potential bias uh, and the evaluation of study quality will be conducted by independent researchers. Now, if you read through the paper, they give all the details of how this was done and, and very, a very thorough piece of work. It is giving rise to fairly conclusive, as, as they've said, significant and, and basically conclusive conclusions. Given that we know this now, and I think... OK, we, we can't say we know it because we haven't had expensive, randomised, double-blind controlled trials. Firstly, because no one wants to pay for them. And secondly, of course, it will be unethical to artificially reduce people's vitamin D levels and expose them to infections because we've reason to believe quite a lot of them would probably die. So this is, this is good combined data that we've got here. And I'm clearly convinced by it, as you, as you can tell, partly because it's so consistent with all the other data we've been looking at. In fact, quite a few of the papers in here we have previously looked at on this channel. And of course, we've talked to many of the people that have done the original research. Now, just some extra information here that adds to the veracity of this, really. The majority um, of the effects of vitamin D are mediated by VDR, vitamin D receptors. So you, you know this, uh, what's happening now, you've got the vitamin D, it fits into a receptor. The combination of the vitamin D and the receptor trot off and does something. It triggers what we call a secondary messenger system. And in the activation of vitamin D, that's very often the activation of genes. And of course, a lot of those genes are in cells <coughs> that are important, like uh, cells in the immune system. So it makes scientific sense, which is always reassuring. So the, the, the vitamin D are mediated by the vitamin D receptors, which promotes the expression of genes containing specific DNA sequences in the uh, expressed in almost all nucleated cells. So the vitamin D receptor is in virtually all nucleated cells. And of course, that's basically all cells in the body apart from the red blood cells. And certainly all the white blood cells have these vitamin D receptors that are so important for immunity. So it makes sense there because this is vital for having all this DNA. You know, if you've got all this sort of useful DNA there that can promote immune responses and optimise metabolism and do other things like that, if you can't use it, um, if you haven't got the vitamin D receptors, the activated vitamin D receptors with the vitamin D to activate all these genes, then they're not much use. It's a bit like having money in your wallet, but you can't open your wallet. You know, <laughs> the potential is there as humans. We just have to optimise it for, for our health. So they are all over the place. Approximately 3% of the human genome is under the control of this activated form of vitamin D. Quite amazing. 3% of the human genome needs vitamin D to work properly. So in us, we've probably got about 21,000 active genes. So we can see that a lot of them, 3% of those, uh, require vitamin D for their normal physiological activation. Vitamin D has been observed to contribute to the synthesis of defensins. These are small immune proteins. And to be pivotal in the enhancement of phagocytic activity. So the bacteria are gobbled up by phagocytic. Ph 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 phage means to eat. Cytic cells, eating cells, phagocytes, they'll eat up viruses and bacteria, which of course is a good idea if you want to get rid of them. Um, and to modulate the uh, immune system response by regulating the inflammatory cascade. So importantly, people with vitamin D are less likely to get this runaway inflammatory cytokine storm that, of course, kills so many people, uh, killed so many people in the pandemic and uh, kills a lot of people still from sepsis. Professor Anderson's actually just sent me this from Italy, Calcifidiol. 
This is the activated form of vitamin D. So when you take vitamin D as a tablet, like you normally get from the supermarket, it takes a week or two to um, activate that into this active form. So if you've got someone who's acutely ill and give them vitamin D, they're not going to get an immediate benefit. But if you give them the activated form, which this is here, this is the calcifidiol, the already activated form, ready available in Italy, then that is, there's pretty good reason to believe that has an immediate benefit because this calcifidiol works within um, a couple of hours. We got that information from Dr. Grimes just a week or two back. Works within a couple of hours, whereas the vitamin D you take by mouth takes a couple of weeks to work. So if someone's already topped up with vitamin D and they get an infection in the best position to combat that infection, but if someone gets an infection and their vitamin D is low, then you could top it up with this. And it works really quickly within a couple hours. And that means that's working actually way quicker than antibiotics. So if someone's got a viral infection, the antibiotics aren't going to work, but the calcifidiol could probably help them. If someone's got a bacterial infection, they need the antibiotics, but why not optimise their immune system as well by making sure they're topped up with calcifidiol if their vitamin D levels are low.